Not only does the design look beautiful and it blends in really nice, it's truly a sustainable house. He gave me the inspiration for this stuff. He showed me that this was possible. Ladies and gentlemen, walking alongside the road here in Shargao on the way up to the north of the island, I wanted to give you guys sort of the first episode of constructing my house here in Shargao. I needed to talk to you guys about the inspiration. Before we begin anything, before we show you guys the planning and how to buy the land and how to do all the nitty gritty things, inspiration is the most important thing when you're starting to build your own home and you have to be inspired from somewhere. I was inspired by tons of designs, but I would be remiss if I didn't mention the person that my house is literally going to be based off of. And I want to introduce you guys to the person who constructed this beautiful place. This is called I Love Milk Tea House here on the way to the north in the barangay of Osmeña in the municipality of Dapa here on the island. And this is a beautiful tiny home that has been constructed mostly out of native material by one of my friends, Rodol, which I met on Facebook. And there's a super interesting story of how all this came to fruition. He's also built another tiny home that I wanna show you guys. But all of this, this whole video is gonna be dedicated to him, who has been my inspiration to build the house that I'm building at the moment. So it's around July, 2021. I'm driving up north on this road, going up to the north of the island to visit my friends Borja and Daphne in the town of Burgos. I'm very frustrated about the situation of building a house in the moment in Chargao. I'm having a hard time getting a budget down. I'm having a hard time picking a design for a house that would actually work here. And lo and behold, I drive across this road and I see this beautiful home behind me. And I was so shocked by seeing this thing, I had to stop over on the side of the road and take pictures of it because I was like, this is an amazing design. I would love to get inspired and try to build something like this. A few months later, I go on a trip to Cebu and I actually see a Facebook post on Chargao Business Classifieds, which is the official Facebook page in Chargao where you can share and sell things, of this place opening up as a milk tea shop. And the owner actually posting in pride what they've done here. So I quickly messaged him, Rodol is his name, and I wanted to find out how he built this place. And I managed to meet with him when I came back to Chargao from Cebu, and I'm so excited to introduce you to this guy in just a little bit. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is the amazing man, Rodol, the man behind this house. How Hi. are you doing? I am good. My name is Rodol Nogueraza, and I'm from here in Osmania. So I am the owner of this house, which is my dream house to be realized, because my plan is to build a small business like like a tea house which is realized right now so uh, this concept is my and do you mind or don't you give us a tour of this house we'd yeah, love to see the inside yeah sure yeah you can. so what was the inspiration behind the house uh this could uh the inspiration actually uh i have a guest before in salvation which is his dream is to uh, build a small house here in Shegal. Uh, it's a cozy one which is uh, spacious and then uh, uh, there's uh, you know, uh, a spacious one which is comfortable to stay and uh, plan also a uh, dual purpose which is a business and uh, a homestay also. Mm, beautiful. Okay. I get to show you the house which is the, the tiny house. It is a tiny house, huh? A tiny house which is... Uh, uh, my dream house to, to be built here in Osmania. Actually, the land is owned by my mo late mother, and it's uh, 100, uh, 110 square meter area, which is the house is already 15 square mm. meter. So I'm gonna show you the whole part of the tiny house. And just for scale, you can see this is where Rodol is standing. This is where I am. Yeah. It is a proper tiny house, but the utilization of the space, especially with the garden, the yard, everything, it's amazing. So I'm really excited for him to show you guys around. So show us around. What, what okay. do you expect? So this could be the porch, which is everyone can stay and enjoy. Uh, you can do relaxing and then also you can eat outside also. And inside, uh, it's a small couch here and then uh, stairs to, to, the, to the bedroom which is a stairs made of um, what it says, the storage, the storage bags and this one here uh, before I put some 
uh, stove here and uh, in a small table here for someone to eat and then the door a window I get the window actually that's an open window I built this one for uh, while cooking you can see outside and uh, you can eat also outside it's easy for you to put some food outside if someone to eat outside actually and in the the control room here uh, it's a little bit easy but it's all good it's okay no no judgment huh? this is a tiny house this is ex this yeah, is exactly okay so this is the comfort from the shower and in the toilet so it's just a little bit easy. and you can tell i mean you can tell how like it is small but it's still spacious you can still shower in here comfortably Ex exactly you can uh do whatever you want is it is uh the comfort room is because it's so spacious you do what, whatever you, whatever you want yeah anything you can do anything <laughs> <laughs> And the shower and the toilet, uh, so very you're comfortable for me to uh, do whatever here inside the uh, comfort room. And then the, uh, the video actually, I'm gonna show you guys here. Call you up. Okay. So the stairs are definitely more of a little bit of an intense climb because it's yeah. more of an angle, but the beautiful thing is the utilization of this space to have shelving. You know, you can open it up and store things in here. Yeah, exactly. So let's go yeah, up to the loft shelves. and look look at this. Even handles going up, like everything is really thought out here. Okay. Beautiful. So the bed is here. Then the earth and then here is uh, you know a window going outside but it changes to a mirror. So th that could be the uh, the living room. You can see it. Beautiful. Here. Amazing. Yeah. And what kind of AC is this? Do you know? Uh, that one? Yeah, is it like a 0.5 horsepower? Uh, yeah, 0.5 horsepower. And so. it's amazing that this will actually, you know, this will this will power this area pretty well, right? Exactly. All over, even the living room mm -hmm. is uh, covered by the dark. So the nice thing is that because the area is so small, that the, uh, the AC is actually able to power, you know, this is only a 15 square meter space. Exactly. But it's, it's amazing when you get such a nice vantage point from the top. And I want Rodolfo to talk to you guys in a minute about the materials because you'd be surprised what this house is made of. And it's super sturdy. The like in structural integrity is amazing. Like you knock on a wall, like you feel everything you're walking. It doesn't feel like this thing is gonna fall over. It feels sturdy, like it's made out of some really good materials, but it's completely sustainable. So in a minute we'll talk about that. What made you choose the materials you chose and what are the materials that you chose for this house? Because a lot of people when they come to Shargal, especially with a big budget, they use cement and hollow blocks and they make things really, really sturdy. But this house is made a little bit different. So what what was the inspiration for okay, so, uh, The materials that you're gonna use this tiny house is just uh, made of raw materials it's because it's just for uh, local ski to produce that materials especially. It's made of uh, uh, round timber, cocoa lumber, plywood and corrugated uh, GI sheet, of course. And then some nipa on the uh, on the roof, and then uh, the window and the door is made of uh, uh, glass. Uh, it's because it's easy for uh, somebody to provide the glass rather than the you know uh, wooden door. Hardwood so, door. Yeah, yeah, hardwood. It's because hardwood right now here in Shaga is so much expensive. That's why I choose a glass for uh, this tiny house. It's because it's easy to produce actually. And then it's not an expensive one. Mm. You can use a hardwood uh, materials, especially. So the materials that I use here is just a bamboo. Uh, actually, this house uh, worth of two hundred fifty thousand pesos for the materials. Wow! And then the labor cost is going to be sixty-five thousand pesos. So all in all, it will be three hundred something like that. So you can build a house which is a mountain of three hundred thousand pesos with this beautiful, uh, cozy, you know, tiny house ever. So, uh, thinking about the uh, uh, concrete uh, house is too expensive. That takes a million. Actually, I have an uh, uh, employee in Salvation who made a whole concrete uh, house, which is too sorry. Imagine, oh my God, this is going to be 7 million pesos. In wow. So, uh, Mahal Karajao. Mahal Karajao is too expensive. <laughs> so the best idea if you are 
I'm pl planning to stay here in Shia guys to build a tiny house. It's not expensive, so it's worth 300 pesos. If you have 300,000 pesos in your pocket, then you can start building a tiny house here in Shia guys. So I think I think Rodol is being a bit modest with how he's explaining this. I think you guys need to understand Shargao is really expensive to build a house in. Getting materials here, for example, the average hollow block costs around 24 to 26 pesos for a cement hollow block. Uh, in other cities, it costs as low as 9, 9, 8, even 6 in Cebu City in some places. But I think what he's being modest about is the sustainability factor. This house being made of plywood, of bamboo, of cocoa lumber, of GI sheets, these are all easily sustainable materials. They don't damage the environment. They don't really make a permanent thing. Yes, the repairs and the upkeep for the house over time will probably end up costing a little bit extra, but the thing is, you are keeping the environment as pristine as possible when you're de when you're building something like this. Not only does the design look beautiful and it blends in really nicely with the surrounding of everything here because it's got that sort of modern native look, it's truly a sustainable house. Everything in here is pretty much biodegradable, maybe besides the GI sheets, which are easily recyclable. But it's super cool to see that, you know, the, the design is so well thought out to be a sustainable thing, which is what Shargao and the Philippines in general needs more of. But in a minute now, we're gonna go look at another design of a house that Rodol actually built. So let's take a look at that. You must feel like some level of pride though, you know, showing this off, no? Mm -hmm, yeah. It's something I think to be really proud of. Yes, Rodol. So, what is this house? What was the inspiration behind this one? Uh, second, uh, you know, a uh, tiny house that I made is an uh, evening one. There is a lot of uh, uh, tourists uh, looking for some, you know, a simple, as small as the simple but a very, very spacious uh, house here in Shaka. So, I decided to make an evening house which is inspired by one of the homestay in General Luna. Which is an evening too, but the uh, the evening in general Luna is not you know uh, it's not spacious for me because there's a lot of things inside. But here in Osmania, the house that I made is just a spacious one and good for a couple actually. I'm gonna show you around. Yes. With the the evening. So in the events here you can see the bed, the table, fan, and then the small kitchen here and in the comfort room we have a small fridge actually for a couple also oh wow i didn't even know there was a fridge yeah, back there a small one nice. so soon to be it's a very dark room but what for now is just a fun first and then the comfort room here another example yeah, of a yeah. tiny bathroom that maximizes the space you can see the toilet you can see the shower super nice so it's going to be perfect for people to stay here in Shigao, which is, uh, you know, uh, very relaxing and uh, so quiet actually. It's because we are here inside. You can never hear any uh, sounds, even the vehicle running outside. You can hear any voice. You can stay here inside the house. So this is the kitchen. Small kitchen. Tiny kitchen, the baby. Tiny kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> you can <laughs> you can cook here and then there's a lot of you know uh, what is this a storage bags mm. uh, you know cabinets to store your things actually so that table is uh, uh, for a couple and then we have to extra uh, you know chicken for uh, some friends. And as for materials, this one follows the same design as, as the, the other same one? Same design with the other, uh, same materials I could use in the first one. So it's made of uh, nipa, plywood, uh, corrugated sheets, and then of course the bathroom is made of the concrete mm. because uh, it's so hard to you know produce raw materials to make a comfort room like that. Beautiful. Walking through this house, here you go are two beautiful, sustainable, and affordable options for housing in Chargao. Not only when it comes to renting a place like this, but to actually constructing 
something like this. Rodol, when I gave up hope, I truly gave up hope, and you know this because we sat here and had a conversation about this. I truly gave up hope on, on building a house. I didn't think it was going to be possible for me with the budget that I was looking to create something. He gave me the inspiration for this stuff. He showed me that this was possible. And while we didn't end up working together, I wanted to give him the respect that he deserves because without him, I wouldn't be building the house that I'm building right now. All of the design was inspired 100% by him. I did some tweaking and stuff to make it a little bit larger and fit the budget that I was working with. But the fact that you can do this on this island, to do something like this, to me is absolutely amazing. And I think that... While we're starting this journey as the first episode of constructing a house here in Shargao, I want you guys to get inspired and know that this is possible for you as well. You can do it. You just have to find the right people. There are people out here who are doing amazing projects just like this on this island. You just have to look for them. Uh, what, I, what I think for in the future is because I just want to encourage all tourists, especially investors here in Shargao to invest their you know, money to make a homestay actually. It's because we all know that a tourist boost uh, coming by next year when the pandemic is over. So I encourage some investors to uh, build a house or a homestay or even a resort. It seems like this kind of tiny house it's because it's uh, not totally expensive. We all know that Shargao is so much expensive when it comes to uh, uh, when you're going to buy a property, especially land. Here in Shargao it's so much expensive. So if you bought an expensive land, then you can make a house which is not totally expensive. It's just a cheap price ever. In my experience, it's so very cheap actually. Some other tourists thinking that making a house and buying some properties in Chicago is too expensive and high price, but you're, you're wrong for that. Actually, the land is too expensive, but building a house, making a tiny house is not expensive. It's so very affordable. So that, uh, that's, uh, you know, this is my, you know, thinking about the future that I can accommodate a lot of tourists in a lower cost of living here in Chicago. Okay guys, so there's nothing more to be said. This is Rodolfo's tiny house, the I Love Milk Tea house here in Osmenia da Pa. You got to come check it out. Again. Rodol has done above and beyond for me. I can't even stress out the... When I gave up, he gave me hope. And that's the biggest thing that I could have asked for. And he gave me the inspiration to build what I'm building. So, for number one, I want to make sure that you guys get in touch with Rodol. If you're trying to build a house, you want a consultation, you want something, you know, help this guy out, help you out. He's got family who are doing the construction and they're really, really great and they're looking for opportunities now to work with other people. So if you're inspired to build a house, you want to do it on a budget, you have some cool ideas, run it by him. He's a super cool dude. I'll put down his Facebook down below. You can just reach out to him directly and obviously come and check out this place. I'll put the Google listing or the location exactly in the description down below. And that's it, guys. That's all that needs to be said. I'm going to head on over to the lot now, back to my construction site as we continue cracking on construction of my own tiny house, just like Rodolfo's. So I'll see you guys in the next one. I love you a long time. Goodbye, Clats.